Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle and a brief tutorial on a basket credit default swap which builds on the credit default swap that I illustrated in yesterday's tutorial and I have shown in this page just to remind where we started with the plain vanilla credit default swap we have a protection buyer who essentially pays insurance premiums the CDS spread these are the guaranteed payments that have to occur typically quarterly to the swap seller in exchange for the contingent payoff, this is the insurance, that if there is a credit event, a trigger, this protection buyer is going to be made whole. In this example, by that buyer delivers the physically defaulted asset or bond to the seller in exchange for the full face value. So that was the plain vanilla credit default swap. The basket credit default swap is much the same. What we're going to change is we focus on the reference asset, which under the plain old credit default swap is either an entity, could be a corporation or a sovereign, or a single instrument like a bond. We change from a single reference asset to a basket of reference assets. So as before, the protection buyer is paying essentially this insurance premium on a regular basis to the swap seller in exchange for a promise to get the recovery to be protected in the event of an, a triggering event but this time the trigger is an nth to default as in let's take the first to default that would be we could also say where one is the attachment point and this means that if we have a basket of reference assets, we let's say we have 20 reference assets, as soon as any one of them defaults, then we've triggered the basket credit default swap. We could also have a second to default, which means that as soon as this bilateral contract is initiated, we go forward in time and one of the underlying assets has a default and then nothing happens. That first default is not a trigger on the bilateral contact, contract. And then we go further in time and another asset defaults. That's the second default. That does constitute the trigger. So in that case, 2 is the attachment point. But we can have n is the attachment point and nth to default. You can see we can have any we can really choose any attachment point here. It just says that the whole basket is triggered when that nth asset, regardless of the sequence to get there, defaults. So naturally, a key variable here is the default correlation between these reference assets. Are these tightly correlated or loosely correlated? To illustrate how tricky that is, consider an example. I'm just going to assume we have 20 reference assets in the basket. That's more than I've got illustrated here, but just assume 20 reference assets. And we're going to pretend that the attachment point is 1, so we have a first to default. The basket is triggered as soon as the first asset, doesn't matter which one, defaults. And I'm going to exaggerate here and say the probability of default is 5% for each and every asset in the basket. So we have 20 references, 5% probability of default, and it's the first to default basket swap. Consider two scenarios. Perfect correlation, row equals 1. The odds of the basket triggering are 5% because they all move together and they all have a 5% probability of default. So we're either going to have all of them default with 5% probability or none of them default with 95% prob probability. That's perfect correlation. Consider now if we reduce the correlation down to 0. See how we lower the correlation from 1 to 0? At correlation of 0, the odds of the basket defaulting are equal to 1 minus the odds of the basket not defaulting. The odds of the basket not defaulting are the odds of 95% raised to the 20th power because each of these bonds has to not default. 95% raised to the 20th power. That reduces to 1 minus 36% or 64%. In other words, when we reduced from perfect correlation to no correlation, the odds of the basket swap being triggered increased 
to 64% from 5%. So you can see in this example where it's a first to default basket swap, lower correlation significantly increased the risk of a trigger on the basket credit default swap. Well, unfortunately, it's not so simple that we can make that general statement. As soon as we move to higher attachment points, it becomes a little more ambiguous. And to, again, illustrate with an extremely ridiculous example, probably, let's assume we had our attachment point of 20, so really it's a 20th to default. In other words, this basket triggers only when all 20 of the constituent assets default. Perfect correlation again gives us a trigger, uh, the odds of the basket triggering at 5%. But this time, with no correlation, the odds of the basket triggering are the odds that all 20 of the reference assets, each at 5% probability of default, in fact default, that's 5% to the 20th power, or very nearly close to 0%. So in this case, as we move the attachment point up to 20, we saw that a reduction in the correlation significantly decreased the odds that the basket would be triggered. So you can get a sense that there's actually some um, ambiguity and complexity in terms of the impact of default correlation depending on where we set the attachment point. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.